take up something further in Jesus' so precious name. No? Amen. Now, today I want you to be taking notes because I did not write down everything it is in my head. So you take notes and Sister Lydia will take all the bullet points and send the bullet points with the scriptures. Now, we know that this year the Lord has said it is a year of expansion and of multiplication. So the Lord wants to enlarge our coast and give us a mighty influence. Okay, now in the beginning of every single year, we need to write down the vision. So point number one, write down your vision. We are still expounding on the put it in application of the vision of expansion and uh, and what else? Multiplication. So how to go about it in a practical way? Now, the first thing that we need to do, point number one, is to write down uh, your vision. So Joshua, when you go home, you write down your vision uh, for 2024. What you want to achieve, things that you want to improve on, uh, Everybody needs to write down uh, his vision for the year. And you need to be in the habit of doing that every beginning of the year. And track yourself whether you've been able to achieve what you wrote down. Because if you just go about uh, 2024 aimlessly, you will never be able to see if you have made the progress or not. So you need to be able to quantify your progress. To have a checklist, Sister Shah always has a checklist. So you need to have a checklist. This is what I say I'm going to do. It was done. This is what I said that I'm going to do, and it was not done. It was done maybe 50%, 40%. Are you with me? So, how about chapter 2, verse 1 to verse 4? Well, the Bible tells us, I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. So expect also God to correct you as you are bringing your vision before the Lord to be done in a prayer. He says, the Lord answered me and say, write the vision. So Joshua, write the vision and make it plain, detail it. Let it not be vague. Even your brains. I used to have, I called it in those days, my own plan. So I would have a big, I used to have biology uh, not uh, books, you know, and I would, it was, I think, A3, A3 not A4, A3 kind of uh, notebook. So I would open it, so it's going to be as big as this, and I would write my Courses, history, geography, philosophy, biology, chemistry, physics, mathematics, what else? French or literature, English. And then I will write that because I'm trying to achieve 75 to 80 percent in the final level grade for each semester. So I will examine myself in mathematics. How much can I have? That one I can have 20. 
in physics. How much can I have? This one I can have between 18 and 20 out of 20. Because in French system they mark 20 out of 20. In history, I really don't like it. <laughs> so, but let me have at least 15 out of 20. In literature, I did not like it at all. If I can only make 10 out of 20, that's so 50%, that's a pass mark. Are you with me? So then when I, I summed up everything, I made also now my own average. I realized that I've only had 72%. Is it not? I'm trying to have 86. So it means I need to at least increase here in French and literature. Have at least 14 out of 20. And I read to the math in the beginning of the year. And then when I get now the real mark or the average of 86%, now I know how much I did in history. I'm not just going through the year aimlessly, not knowing what my target is. You see, the word of God has a, a practical aspect to it. So he says detail, you have the vision. Are you with me? And when you are going to read it, you are going to be able to run with it. That vision is for the point in time. If it is for your academics, it is nine months. And then that academic year is uh, over. If it is for the whole degree, it can be four years, three years, two years. And every year you need to have uh, a small goal to achieve the bigger goal. Break it down. Because the just shall live by faith. For the church, when you do management, it is a management by stage. And every stage you need to have a deliverable. Something that you deliver that is completely finished. Are you with me? So even in church, you just don't, we don't just do church anyhow. Even for TV ministry, we don't just do TV ministry anyhow. I don't just tell the Holy Spirit, now inspire me. It doesn't work like that. You need to prepare, you need to write it down. And then you need to rehearse it. So that you are not saying, uh, 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 no. So that's how you put that in practice. You write it down and you run with uh, the vision. And of course you need to pray so that uh, God can back you up in your plans. In this year, you need to examine yourself. It is very important self-examination in every aspect of life. You sit down with yourself and talk to yourself. Lydia, how are we doing? So you talk to yourself. Self-examination. You take different aspects of your life and you examine yourself. Pardon? Yes, point number two, self-examination in every aspect of your life, personal life, spiritual life, career life, self-examination. Now, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 28, Paul tells us, let the man examine himself. 1 Corinthians 11, 28. Let the man, let the woman examine yourself. I, somehow like in Jerry, I don't like uh, correction. You hear me? So, especially for my mom. So, what I used to, to do, because I, I know that education was a big thing for her, you know. 
So, I, I will examine myself. What would Mom ask me to do for certified studies that I have not done? If it is my two hours of uh, personal study every week, every day, sorry, I will check out my own personal two hours of uh, study every day. If it is about reading uh, this book, I've read this. So when she comes to share with have you done it? I say, yes, I've done it already. And I don't want her to be shouting at me, I don't do this, I don't do this, I don't do this. I don't like it. So I examine myself. You need to examine yourself. Because if you do not examine yourself, others are going to examine you. And they are not going to be kind in their examination. In 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, Paul says, Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. You need to test yourselves. So when you read your books, you need to anticipate questions that are going to be asked during the test. Are you with me? So, I used to formulate my own question. How the teacher is going to reword the thing to trick me? And most of the time, my own questions were what the teacher asked me. So, in the faith, it is the same thing. Test yourself. Jerry, when you read 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 10, you don't know it, do not be deceived, the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Neither from the cantors and adulterers. So, I know God does not like it. I know that what disqualifies the Christians. So I decide my own life. Jerry, are you still drunkenness? No, I'm no longer there. I used to see the went to clubs, no, I'm no longer there. So I am examining myself. I am testing myself whether I am still in the faith or I am now in religion. Because many are in religion, they are not in the faith. So if you examine yourself, you're going to determine whether you are in Christ or you are in a religion. And Christ is not in a religion. So you sit down and you give yourself a mark compared to yesterday yes, years. Have you progressed in your Christian walk? Have you drawn closer to God? Or have you walked away? Have you become a lukewarm? Examine yourself. Your walk of love. The way you used to talk to people. Are you still that harsh in your speech? Or when now you are speaking, is there grace coming out of your mouth? Always a season with your thought to keep every corruption like Paul was saying in the book of Ephesians. You see, the white of an egg has no taste. You need to put some seasoning in it. Now, do I put too much seasoning also? And it might have saved the stomach of other people. You don't need also to, to sugarcoat everything. You are not also helping the people. Faithful are the roots of a friend. And if you consider someone to be your friend, then you will tell them the truth, but in love. Have you been telling the truth, but not in love? Examine your walk of love. You are in the faith, but is your walk the walk of love? Do you have empathy and sympathy? Compassion is a combination of empathy and of sympathy. Many women, they just like empathy. 
come back, the weep with me, but don't help me to solve my problem. No! Why do you need to repeat the same problem for 40 years? I will empathize with you, but I want to sympathize with you to bring you out, to show you the way out. If you only empathize with people, you want to not help them. They will think, I don't want to hear what you are saying to me. Just weep with me. Yes, I will weep with you. But now let me explain to you how to come out of that pit. I've come down inside that pit to connect emotion with you. I've shown you my vulnerability and how I went through the same thing. But now I also want to show you how I came out of it. Don't just empathize. Sympathize. Jesus was moved with compassion. Empathy is pity. Jesus was not just moved with pity, he was moved with compassion. So you empathize and you sympathize with the people to bring them out in the name of Jesus. Examine yourself emotionally. Maybe yesterday you were an emotional wreck. Now, are you emotionally stable, Shusha? Examine the men also have emotional problems. Examine yourself. I've come to know that I was very sensible, sensitive, sorry. It was not uh, the other people who had a problem. It was me who was uh, very sensitive. So, because I grew up in the atmosphere of love, some people grew up in an atmosphere where there was no love. When they keep on criticizing one another, tearing one another in the same family, so they consider it as a normal. That is something that is dysfunctional, but for them it was a normal. So when I associated myself with those people, they were hurting me, but I was not able to say it. And I kept it for more than a decade. And I exploded. And I realized I could not change them. Unless they want to work on themselves, and they are not ready to work on themselves, they think that is no more kind of uh, Lifetime will you criticize and pull down everybody. So I decided to guard my heart. But one thing the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence. Because how the link will flow the issues or the boundaries of life. I will love you, but I will not allow you to keep on hurting me. And now I devised the system where in my mind those people are no longer in my holy of holies. They are no longer even in my holy place. They are not even in my inner court. They are in my outer court. The reason why a lot of young people commit suicide of uh, the bullying that is happening on uh, Facebook or TikTok because they have put those people that are on uh, Facebook in the early of uh, holies. If you saw a black man walking on the street naked and he saw it in the Joshua big head, will you be disturbed? No, you say, he's mad, he's crazy, he doesn't even know me. That's how you need to consider everyone that is on your Facebook. If someone does not have your personal number, he's not your friend. Are you with me? If someone, yes, so those on Facebook are not your friends. If someone has to go on Facebook to say happy birthday, you are not that close because he doesn't have your digits. But if he were, he was your friend. He will call you happy birthday. My spiritual mother has a Facebook account, and her husband also has a Facebook account. 
But they are in the ability to take on anything about uh, that Facebook about the town. They've never been on that Facebook uh, town. Are you with me? So on their birthday, thousands of the pastors come and happy birthday, sir. Happy birthday, ma, and so on and so forth. And the, the one that is managing that account puts a picture and they are commenting, commenting, commenting. So you know these people, they are in the outer courts. But me, <laughs> they sent a picture of the king. This is the king that we bought our birthday. I see it in the house. And I don't put the happy birthday on Facebook. I call them. If someone does not call with you, it's not your friend. Don't be concerned about what they post about you on that Facebook or on YouTube. There are lots of young people don't know how to categorize their acquaintances. They put everybody in their heart. Are you with me? So I learned how to no longer put everybody in my heart. And I have different circles. And everybody criticizes me. Then the outer court. I may smile with you. Because if you are truly my friend, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 18, 15 to 20, Matthew chapter 18, 15 to 20, if you have a problem with me, you will come and talk to me face to face. You will not go on Facebook. You will not go on television. You will not go on YouTube. You will come and talk to me face to face. You will not talk to my pastor first of all. You will come and talk to me face to face. If I reject you then, you talk to the, to the pastor, to the church, but you will talk to me face to face. You don't want to go on the radio, on TV, on YouTube, you start attacking me. In my heart, that puts you in the outer court because you are behaving like someone who is in the outer court. So, why do I give the privilege of being given an inner court? Are you ready? So, that's how you deal with uh, some dysfunctional people, some dysfunctional relationships. So, examine yourself uh, in every aspect of your life. Have you progressed emotionally? Are you now better? When I used to be 25, 26, I used to weep a lot because of how wicked some people were towards me. And now I no longer weep. When I look at myself, when I was in my 20s, and today, worse things have happened, but emotionally, I have uh, healed. And we need to heal. Emotionally as well. So examine your emotional life uh, as well. Examine your relationship with your siblings. Have I improved on how I relate with my sisters, with my brothers? Have I improved how I relate with my children, my grandchildren? It is never too late. If you read the Bible study of uh, It shall be well with me and my children. I told the testimony of uh, the elderly gentleman that I called Bob. But his name is not Bob. When he was in the Jamaican, when he was much younger, he parted a lot. He had uh, about four or seven children, something like that, with different, uh, with one woman, uh, one or two women. But he never truly cared about. Uh, then his idea was he's going to go back to Jamaica when the village is uh, uh, he came at 16 with the wind rush and he was thinking when I finish I'm going back to Jamaica so he divorced his wife and uh, he did not truly really pay attention to the children but every summer he was in Jamaica in King Kingston, Jamaica and he would keep buying the car he was a mechanic, so he would fix the cars and send them back home. All his cousins and nephews loved him. And when he retired, 
They tempted to go to Jamaica. They said, no longer have money. So we no longer need you. You realize that uh, he's making you run, not his children. You should have a focus on his uh, children. And now his children were strange to him. His grandchildren were strange to him. And he became a Christian. He was always weeping, weeping. And he was a fool. Nobody told him that priorities your children, not your nephew and your nieces. So I explained to him it is never too late. And his granddaughter received the Jesus. And she gave birth to a uh, daughter, so his great granddaughter. And she wanted to know about the uh, Jesus. I said, This is God giving you a second chance. You blew it with the children. Now, you know the grandchildren, because the grandchildren was already 22. You also blew it with the grandchildren. But you can we can, can feast the grandchildren and the great grandchildren. He wanted to buy her a car. I said, they don't need a car. I told her, said, I don't need your car. Where were you for 40 years? I don't need your cars. You can't buy my love to see now my, my children. I said to him, just pray for God to soften the heart of your children to restore the relationship. No family is perfect. There are wounds everywhere. And God help me to heal. Help me to focus on the grandchildren now if I did not how get it right with the children. You need to do that. We all need to do that. It is very, very important. So examine the previous years and see how good you are doing and aim at improving in Jesus' uh, precious name. Now, in 2020, so that's number three now, you will need wiser counsel. You and I will need wiser counsel. Proverbs 22 verse 13. Proverbs 22 verse 13 says that foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the, the rod of correction will drive it far from him. Proverbs 22 verse 15. This is my favorite proverb. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. When I was 18, Joshua, I thought that was. I knew better than my parents. There was a French song that uh, used to say, when I was 20, I thought I knew everything in the world. That's always how people at that 18 and 20 think. They know everything. And there is nothing new under the sun. Your parents were 18 and 20 as well. They thought the same thing that you are. Thinking. My mom also was at the time was 40. My dad was also 40. Everything you are going through, your parents went through the same thing. But you and I need to be wise like uh, Solomon. Solomon decided to take the advice of uh, the advisors of his father. So that he doesn't have to repeat the mistakes of his fathers. We cannot help it when it comes to the mistakes of our parents. But we can decide from wise accounts and correction to get it right in the name of Jesus. My parents, when they had the three of us, they were not married. My three brothers, we all were born out of wedlock because my parents did not know any better. And once they discovered the little teaching of the Catholic Church, immediately they got married. And then 
Six years later, when he came around, truly born again, not just the religion, I'm truly born again. And he went from glory to glory. By that one we said, he made a mistake. So if you hide, you say, no, I never made a mistake, you are deceiving yourself and not helping the children. And that one we say, what that he was uh, wrong. But you need to get it uh, right. And one more we say, is part of the thing what they say is that uh, you go out with this one and then you abandon her, you go out with this one and you abandon her. I said, no, 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 we did those mistakes. But you do something that is uh, better. So be transparent with the children so that uh, they can now also get counsel and uh, advice from you and be able to advance and get it right. In the book of Proverbs chapter 5, verse 1 to verse 2, Amplified Classic. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 1 to verse 2, we are reading from the Amplified Classic. The Bible says, I saw Joshua, I saw Jerry, I don't uh, uh, listen to you. I don't uh, want to read. Be attentive to my wisdom. Godly wisdom learned by actual and costly experience. Not just any kind of wisdom, a godly wisdom learned by actual and costly experience. And incline your ear to my understanding of what is becoming and prudent for you. Now, what do I mean by that? A lot of people want to give you advice in life. And the truth of the matter, they are not qualified to give you that advice. I say it again. And lots of people want to give you advice on what to do, but they are not qualified to give you that uh, advice. Imagine that you are you want to become a surgeon. Will you go and be an apprentice to a mechanic? I will be no. It is a foolishness because he had no actual learning and no costly experience in surgery. Are you with me? So if you want to be a surgeon, you will go. Doesn't matter if you love your mechanic. He said, I love you, but what I want to achieve, you can't uh, guide me. The best you can do if you are honest and you truly really love me. He would appoint me to the surgeon. And then I would go and sit under that uh, surgeon and uh, learn what he has, not just the head knowledge. The mechanic would have read the book of a bed castle. Does it make that mechanic a surgeon? No. I've read part of the book of bed castle. Does it make me a great surgeon? No. I can give you the book to inspire you so that you, if you want to pursue that kind of career, yes. So I can only point you. John the Baptist had a limitation. Some people have limitation to what they can offer you. And John the Baptist was not uh, egocentric to say that I have brought you thus far. Now I need to introduce you to someone else that will bring you to your next level. You need to learn to identify when the season is over. That this person, no matter how much you love him, he cannot take you to the next level. And John the Baptist said, I only baptize you with water. And there is another one who is coming. He's greater than I. I'm not even worthy to lose the sandal, the, the, the laces and the sandals. He has a greater baptism. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with the power. 
And then when Jesus came into the scene, John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God. He takes away the sins of the world. Follow him. And everybody was angry because the multitude were following down Jesus. And they said, John, look, this guy that you baptized, you can lead someone to Christ. You can even be the one to go to baptize that person. I was going to baptize in Manchester. Uh, since I was baptized as a Catholic, I decided to be baptized myself. In 2007. But someone prayed for me for baptism the Holy Ghost. And that's what he talks. So John the Baptist is the one who baptized Jesus for all righteousness' sake. And Jesus increased. He had a greater ministry. And John the Baptist understood his limitations. He says, Now follow the one that I baptized. Don't be angry about me. I've done my ministry. Andrew, Peter, James, and John were disciples of John the Baptist. Are you with me? I just say to them, my time and my ministry, my teaching for you has come to an end. Now you need to follow Jesus. And in John chapter 1, they started to follow Jesus. They said, Master, where do you live? He said, Come and uh, see. Sometimes you need to have uh, that maturity to put your feelings uh, aside. My pastor, Jean Francois, I loved him. He laid the good foundation. But I needed more than the foundation. I needed to go through Bible college to have a better understanding. When I finished Bible college, I love those people. But that's how far they could uh, take me. God needs to expose you. Impartation is not just the letters. The person must have experienced some of the things that you want to see in your life. You see? That's why when Mary was pregnant, Jesus, God sent the angel sent him to Elizabeth, who was already six months. Pregnant. Was not Jesus uh, greater than John the Baptist? Yes. Was not the miracle of uh, Mary greater than the miracle of Elizabeth? Yes. But uh, the miracle of uh, Elizabeth, Mary was still uh, in uh, that uh, beginning stage. The miracle of Elizabeth was already six months ahead of it. God is going to send you to someone who has a similar experience that can relate to what you are going through, that knows something about the next level. Now, if you are an emotional person and you allow people to blackmail you, you should not associate with Mommy Kate. You should not associate with uh, Richard. I want the Lord has called me to plant uh, thousands of churches. You don't even have one church that no, you're a pastor. Why would I continue to sit with you? You don't have uh, that the wisdom God is not learned by actual and costly experience. Are you with me? And here is Mommy Kate that has a, a wisdom, a godly wisdom learned by actual and costly experience. She had Plant the more than 2,000 churches. And I need to be under her for apprenticeship. She won't just give me a head knowledge, she'll give me experience. You can read the books of uh, being a manager. It doesn't make you a manager. They'll put you under a manager that is going to show you how to be a manager. Someone said, You don't need to go there. I read the book of medicine already. I will tell you. Will you allow such a person to operate on you? No. But we do that in the spirit. So you need people that have 
Godly wisdom learned by action and costly experience. They know what it is to be betrayed. They know what it is to start with someone and wipe around the two people in the church. They've been there. They know when it is, how it is when there is no instrument. And they only have to sing with the, the voices. But today that's not how the church is. Are you with me? You need the kind of people in your life. And if you are an emotional people, you will feel like you are betraying the people that are not with you. You are not betraying them. You need to continue your journey. If I need to be a Christian television, you've never been a Christian television. What are you going to teach me about Christian television? And not the wish to be like your TV, those kind of worthless TV station. But the number one Christian television in the world. I need to be under the wings of someone who started God's channel, started to be in Europe, started to be in UK. He knows about the business. So your insecurity, if I try to manage your feelings and your insecurity, I just delay my promotions. Because you do not have uh, that wisdom learned by actual and constant experience on television. Are you with me? If you want to learn something about the journey, then ask me, Joshua. But if you want to learn something about nursing, about, uh, uh, I will send it to someone else. If you want to learn something, yes. From, you are going to see that in the Amplified Classic. From actual and costly experience. If you want to be an occupational therapist, I won't give any answer. I will send you to Pastor Rosemary. She has the actual learning and the experience. And she keeps on increasing on her experience. You need to position yourself right in 2024. If you don't position yourself right, some of your friends that you have, you need to teach them. I'm telling you the truth. Because they are going to hold you back. When I was growing up, Joshua, there was a civil war in my country. So there were some militias and there was the official army. Most of my friends, when we were 16, 14, I was still in the GCSE one, we had the first war. And I was in the second uh, high school, the first one, we had the second war. And went on to the first at A level. So most of my friends from already the GCSE day enrolled in those militias. So 90% of my friends had guns. You me? And me, I love my friends. I wanted to win them to Christ. I trust some people you can win them to Christ. They are too far gone. Pray for them from a distance. But uh, I did not have a wisdom. I told the foolishness is found in the heart of her child. And they will go to the Pope. But that was the life. The Lord of Pope, they will go drop the somewhere kill someone, rape someone, and then they will go and drink until they are drunk. So I will join them in that boat, drinking, drinking, and I got shot twice. Thank God, miraculously, the bullet did not kill me. And after it happened the second time that I got shot, I came to my senses. <laughs> I think, if I continue to follow this video, I'm going to go into a coffin. And many of them died before they even reached 16. They died. One of them was playing with a great name, removing the, the needle and putting it back. And one of his friend, because you need to count down till 10, one of his friends removed the needle and counted down till 7, put it back. And he came to play basketball. That day I did not go to play basketball. And he came with his great name. He tried to, to intimidate others. He removed the thing. He was, he was trying to count up till the seven. He did not know that. They were already counting up. He said, He exploded. 
And that basket won't count. The only thing that the Peter brought bits and pieces of his body. That's when I decided, I think I have a future. <laughs> I don't have a future. These people, they've set the mind of destroying themselves. I think I need to cut my losses. I need to love them and pray for them from afar. Are you me? Emotions are going to get you killed. So then were your friends. They used to play basketball together on the path of life they have chosen. You see, if someone is taking drugs, or if someone has weapons, and the police come to the SWAT and arrest them, they will not question if you have it or you don't have it. Because you were in your company, all of you, <laughs> you are collected and brought to prison. But you have nothing. And because of the wrong company that you can, you will, whatever you will say, they say, no. You are an accessory to crime. So I cut my losses. <laughs> I went there, bye bye. I have a future. I see that you have already made up your mind to destroy your own future. I have a bright future in Jesus' name. Are you with me? Whatever you are going through, others have gone through it as well in Jesus' name. Now, because of our time, in 2024, you need to have discretion. You need to have discretion. That's the last thought. You need to have discretion. Now, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 2, Proverbs chapter 2, from verse 10 to verse 12, he said, when wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul, discretion will preserve you. Understanding will keep you. So wise people are very discreet. You will need to be very discreet about your plans, about the plans of your family about the parts of the church, about the vision. Let people only know how the iceberg principle. An iceberg is about the 5% of the surface and 95% on the water. So when we see, oh, that's why the Titanic sank. You know, they only see a small iceberg. Oh, this, we can't go there because there was a massive iceberg underneath uh, that the sea. So be very discreet about your life. Discretion will preserve you. Because even when you are doing business, some people want to steal your idea. Imagine you have an idea of making chapati, and they will send it to Asta, and you come and open your mouth. I'm talking to Asta. Of this great chapati, and they will they will take uh, my first batch by uh, August. You give the whole plan away. August, it is in eight months. Then the first your so called friend who heard it went back home, did chapati quick, 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 and then called uh, we even gave them the name of the person. Uh, that you are dealing with uh, in Asda. You call them. I also have Shabbati, but I can deliver you in March. And then uh, they take his uh, Shabbati. And they call you. I think we are not going to do business with you. We apologize for the inconvenience. And then you see now the brand of your friend. Where did he or she get the idea? Because you opened your mouth and uh, said everything. Are you think discretion you are going to wait on the contract is a sign. I kept my mouth shut for 10 years. I did not tell the Lord that I was eating with that I was writing those Bible studies. I was in the house twice a week. 
Then they did not know for 10 years I was writing the Bible study. We started to read all that. They did not know. We printed them books. They did not know. 32 books. Be wise as the servant. The servant knows everybody's trying to keep it, keep it dream. So he hides until he becomes a mighty python, the force to wreck the wind. Then he rears its head. You can't stop it anymore. So learn discretion in your life. Learn discretion. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 11, verse 22, the Proverbs 11, verse 22, it says, As a ring of gold in a swine's mouth, so is a lovely woman who lacks discretion. Are you with me? In those days, when they were giving a, a dowry to a woman, they were not giving her a ring, a ring like we have. This is a European uh, custom. They would give her a ring, Genesis chapter 24. They would give her necklaces and a uh, 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 ring. And also they would give her a tiara, which had a dead point with the name of the family of the husband. That's not the parable of the coin, one coin got lost. And because if she, you don't have a death point, they will not marry you because you basically are careless about someone else's family that you are going to enter into. So she had to sweep the whole house and need to find it. Otherwise, the world is going to marry me. It's like the ring today. They gave the ring at you, you lost it. So, you have something that is precious, the pink. Does not know that this is a real gold. And what does the pig do? He takes his snout and wallow in the in the mud. Many of us we have something precious under our nose. And because of lack of distraction, we are destroying it. Be discreet, Joseph. Be Joseph was discreet about his life. It is lack of discretion. He shared his dream with the wrong people. He shared his dream with his brother that had gone jealous and they sold him to slavery. There are some things you need to keep yours. Even when you are a family, it doesn't mean that you don't love your sister, it doesn't mean that you don't love your brothers, but each one of you has his own destiny. So there are some things that you will not reveal to your brothers, even the biological brothers, same mother, same father. And when you are married, your friends are not part of that marriage. Your brother is not part of that marriage, your sister is not part of that uh, marriage. You've made a circle of uh, three. You, your spouse, and uh, Jesus. The threefold call cannot be easily so you need to be very discreet. Otherwise, what is precious, you actually be modding the thing because of lack of discretion. And as we are building the church, you can read Nehemiah chapter 1, Nehemiah chapter 2. I will stop on Nehemiah chapter 1, Nehemiah chapter 2. You need to read the entirety. Nehemiah had the plan to reveal the walls of uh, the city. The king also gave him a uh, money. You will need to be discreet about uh, your plans. You will need to be discreet about your finances. Uh, you will need to be discreet about your conduct. You with me? He did not uh, disclose uh, the purpose of his visit. He just came as if he came on holiday to see the land of his uh, fathers. At that night, he went to do a survey of the land, an estimation of, of the damage 
and how much it's going to cost to repair. Are you with me? Because the king needed the exact amount of money so the king can release the money. So you need to, when you have the affairs of the king, you need to be very, very discreet. When you have the ear of mighty people, you need to be very, very discreet. Because everybody wants uh, to have the number of the king. Everybody wants to have the money of the king. So if you have access to the king, don't, uh, you need to protect that other access. Some people will call me, what a Jerry, can you give me the number of the director of Chief Daniel Garcia? I cannot give it to you. I also fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. I said, praise the Lord. And you also write an email because I wrote an email. That's how I got the number. So do also the same thing. Let God connect you. I will nobody accept Jesus and then become angry with me. But if I give the number, then I bring in the cross. Are you free? So I need to be discreet with the relationship that I have. Mommy Kate has my husband, I have a number, I have a number of, of uh, her husband, but they have more than 2,000 pastors. Only about 100 of us, the pastor has the personal number. So if someone asks me the number, Mommy Kate, I cannot give it to you. So you need to be very discreet even in your Contacts. You may know something, and then they themselves share it. You can't uh, share it. You can even pray for someone, they are healed, but you can't share it unless they themselves share it. Then you can uh, share it. This question. And then I went by night, he surveyed how much it's going to cost to build this thing. And then go to other to the king. This is how much. I need that the king release the money from the treasury. And then he came to the people. I, the purpose of my visit is this, this. When you already have made the survey, you have got the fall from the king, nobody could uh, stop him. Because among them were people like Sambalat, Tobias. They were angry. Not everybody is going to rejoice with you when you are rebuilding. They were angry and they ridiculed them. Many are going to ridicule you. What are you trying to achieve in the house of prayer for one nation? Do you have people that are seeking? No. Do you have even keyboards? No. You are achieving nothing there. They say to them, you are achieving nothing. Even if a fox grows on that uh, pile of rubbers, just going to collapse. But they kept on uh, working. And the hand of the Lord was up on them. And in 50 days, they finished. Uh, the wall, and then they realize this thing, God is behind it. Are you with me? And then they have to come up with false prophecies. They won't believe every prophecy. Some of them are based in the envy and jealousy that you are going to collapse. It's not going to work. In 2024, be very discreet with what you are about to do. When they know it, it's only the team that has already advertised it. Are you ready? They cannot uh, stop it. Rest of people had access. Some people came to weep with you, but they find it hard to rejoice with you. So, since the period of weeping has come to an end, the purpose and the association with you also has come to an end. Because they cannot handle the time of rejoicing. And the time of expansion and the time of uh, multiplication. So don't feel the bad with the so long, bye bye, so long, bye bye. And this year 2024, I'm going to wave the lots of people so long, bye bye. Let's pray. Father, thank you for 2024, the year of expansion and multiplication. Thank you because you will increase our territory and cause us to gain a mighty influence. And I pray we receive wisdom, discretion, we examine our walk with you, our walk with one another, let it be a walk of love. Father, thank you for the times of weeping. Weeping may endure for a night, but 
joy comes in the morning. Let 2024 be a year of joy and celebration. And anyone that was with us, that to went with us, that cannot handle our time of rejoicing, some are not by us. And all the other ones, they were with us our time of weeping. But when we were now rebuilding, when we were now advancing in life, they became angry, envious, and jealous. Father, let the Tobias be gone for our life in Jesus' name. And I pray you send a new people. People who have actual learned by the knowledge and costly experience and they can impart what the, the journey has been. So that we don't have to reinvent the wheel, we can just run with endurance the race that is set before us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you and keep you.